Hey everybody, I'm Pete, and today I am showing off the new PixHawk 4 Mini. It is a flight controller for quadcopters, fixed wing planes, rovers, anything you want. Um, it allows you to autonomously do missions and stuff, so it's pretty fun. Um, I'm going to open up the box, show you what's inside, talk about some of the specs. Then I'm going to show you some of the software and how to set it up. Just pretty high level. Um, and then we actually did install it in a 250 size drone. And so we took this up and got some cool footage with that too. So we'll show you a demo at the end. So here we've got all the parts spread out on the table for you. This is everything that comes in the box. Um, we've got some decals to throw on your uh, vehicle of choice. We've got the GPS mounting uh, hardware. It's just basically a couple poles. You've got a long one and a short one, depending on the, where it's going to fit. Um, USB cable for programming and setting it up uh, with the software. Here we've got the power board. Um, this is actually going to take um, like your LiPo battery and then bring it down to a logic level that's useful for the PixHawk. Um, so that takes five volts. Um, it is not used for powering servos. So if you do have servos on your vehicle, you need to power that separately. But this thing does a great job um, bringing down the power for the PixHawk. And then also it has these four ports on either side right there. Um, and those are going to power your speed controls if you have four of them. So like on a quad, like we showed for the example, I've got these main power outputs going straight to my electronic speed controls. Um, here we've basically just got some mounting foam, which is actually pretty important. Um, you want to stick that on the bottom of your PixHawk 4 Mini and get it mounted somewhere centered um, on the vehicle. And so then that foam actually helps um, cancel out some of the vibrations that might be caused by the motors or suspension or whatever you're doing with your, your vehicle there. Uh, and then we've got a whole bunch of different uh, connection cables. These are useful when um, bringing in more sensors into your vehicle. Um, I ended up only using the cable that goes to my telemetry uh, sender and then also the power one. Um, they're all kind of color coded so there's only two big ones and the one that has mostly black and red, that one's for power. And that was the one that I used to come from this board to the PixHawk. And um, yeah, and then these other ones would be used for connecting other various device uh, sensors. And so there's also this little divider bus right here, and that allows you to daisy chain or, or go into this and then go out to more sensors. So if you wanted to add an airspeed sensor to your flying vehicle, that would be one way to do it but you can put up to four additional sensors in there too. Um, this round thing right here is the GPS. Um, yeah, and then this is the main controller right here. Um, and the main thing about this is that it's actually a stripped down version of the PixHawk 4. So this is the PixHawk 4 Mini, and it's designed to give you kind of the bare minimum to get up and running with smaller vehicles. So you can see right here we've got eight outputs. Um, and those are PWM outputs, so you're going to use those to send them to your motor controllers or your servos. You do need to power your servos separately, though. Uh, you can't use the, the power rail on here to power servos. Just wanted to warn you about that. Um, but it has eight outputs, and so the PixHawk 4, the bigger one that we sell, actually has 16 outputs. So that's going to be for a much bigger vehicle that has a whole lot more going on. Um, here is another important port, the PPM is actually gonna be the port that receives all the control lines from your transmitter. There's also some other stuff on the other end here. Um, this took me a second to get used to. There's like some silk on the top of the board here and it actually mimics what you're looking at here. So like this telemetry input is actually the bottom one there and the RC input is in there too. And then it also has um, the GPS module is right here, so actually the way this works is you just plug this straight into here, and let's see, they, all, they are polarized and they have a nice little click to them. They, they lock into position with this little lever there, so unless you push that down it ain't falling out. Yeah, so that's how you get GPS in and then powers right down below there, and that's going to go directly from my power board into the PixHawk Mini. Um, that's pretty much, it also has... UART, I2C, and CAN. So it's got quite a lot of stuff in there. Uh, the other side here, we've got our USB plug just for talking to the software and getting it set up. We're gonna do that here in just a minute. A reset button and then some debug stuff, which I didn't get into with my setup. 
It also has an SD card, which allows you to log all the data while you're flying, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let's plug this into the software and uh, I'll show you some of the basic setup that's necessary to get this going. So here I have the software called Ground Control pulled up here, Q Ground Control. And this is the software that works with the PixHawk family of flight controllers. And um, yeah, so the first thing you do is you just plug in your PixHawk with the USB. Find the port here. And I have my LiPo battery unplugged so that hopefully none of these motors will spin up while I'm doing any of this. So it should auto connect to the software here. It just takes a second. Oh, so many beeps. Waiting for vehicle connection and there it is. All right, so this one has already been set up so you can see that all of these little green dots um, on each little spot there across the top. That means that I've already set up my airframe, I've already calibrated my sensors, I've already calibrated my radio, I've already chosen my flight modes, and I've also, my power looks good according to the flight controller right now. So I was gonna show how some of that stuff works. Uh, first things first, I would actually hit this firmware tab over on the left, and then in order to update the firmware, it's actually a pretty easy procedure. You just need to cycle that USB connection again. So disconnect from the PixHawk 4 and then plug it right back in. And with this software open, and when you're clicked on the firmware tab, it'll automatically update the firmware. Um, I also did that for my telemetry devices too before uh, going with this the first time. It was the same procedure, just plug it into this with this software window open with the firmware tab and it automatically updates it. So that was pretty easy. Um, and then joystick, I didn't end up using because I was going to use an actual RC controller, um, and they call that a radio here in this software, so I didn't mess with that tab much. Um, first thing to set up is to choose your type of airframe. And this is pretty cool, it actually shows all the available types of airframes that this can control. So we've got, you know, anywhere from helicopters with the tail um, to fixed wings, to octocopters with eight propellers. Oh man, all this different stuff. Um, and then rovers too, it can definitely do ground stuff. Anyways, I wanted to highlight that each one of these actually has a list below it that are types of aircraft within that category. So we've, within flying wing, we can see that there's a bunch of different stuff. And these are actually names of types of flying wings so that you're closer to being set up, ready to go with this software. So I was gonna do a quadcopter, so I went over to the quadcopter, I went to quad rotor X, and then in the menu here, I was lucky, I actually saw the quadcopter that I'm setting up, the ZMR250 Racer. So when I clicked onto that, it actually preset a lot of stuff for me and I was closer to getting ready to rock. So I chose that airframe, um, and all this stuff is actually updated in real time, so when you click something, it sends it to the PixHawk. Most of it is done that way. Usually it'll give you a pop-up window saying like, okay, you need to reset your PixHawk for this to take effect. Uh, the next tab here on the left is sensors, and again, you can see mine are, have green dots next to them, but when you first plug this in, you're gonna have either yellow or red, depending on if they've been calibrated and stuff. And I did wanna show some of this stuff, because it's pretty cool. Um, when I click on compass and I want to do a calibration, it's actually going to calibrate all the different sensors on this. Um, you get another window here and you have to hold the quadcopter according to what the picture on the screen is. So I'm going to try to mimic that airplane and then rotate around like this and see then I got a green box. So now I'm going to choose the next one over, flip it upside down and I kind of look like that airplane, and now it's asking me to rotate around like this. So, there's about six of these that you have to do. I think I'm done. And this one does require a reboot, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now anyways. And then we'll get to hear that wonderful beeping that I've gotten so used to in the last few days. See radio. Um, this guy, I'm gonna turn on my radio here, and you get a handy like screen on the right side, a little image showing your two sticks, 
and it looks a lot like a radio like this, so you can follow along and calibrate that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and calibrate these two real quick to show you that process. It's kind of fun. So you just hit this calibrate button right there and it says, before calibrating, you should zero all your trims and sub trims, which I have already done. So I know it's good to go. Um, so hit OK. And now it's asking me, lower the throttle stick all the way down. So all the way down. Sweet. <laughs> and then I hit next. And then it says, move the throttle stick all the way up. And you kind of go through this whole step, and then it shows me bottom right, bottom left, and then far right, far left, and then nose down, and then pull back. And then I have some other um, channels on this that I need to show it the maximum and minimum. So I'm just going to click all of those channels real quick. And I'm just using the eight channels on this. Um, so then I hit next. And that's something I wanted to mention. I first set this up with a six channel radio. And while that's fine, um, I think that having more than six is pretty crucial to do anything interesting. Um, because basically you've got your four. So the four are gonna allow for manual control or semi-manual control of flight. Um, and that's standard quadcopter style flying or wing. You're gonna have your roll, it's gonna roll you, and it's gonna pull you back, push you down. This is gonna be your yaw, so it'll twist you, and then throttle to go up and down. Um, but then, having more switches available allow you to enter flight modes. And so we're gonna set that up next, which is actually the fun, exciting stuff about this flight controller. Because, you know, without this, if you just have a standard flight controller, you're flying manually. And you can either do that line of sight so you're watching with your eyes, or you can wear a pair of goggles and you know, fly point of view with the camera on the front. Um, and that's, that's pretty awesome. But to take it to the next level is to add a flight controller like this, and then now it can listen to GPS and go places, and it can hold position, and it can autonomously land, and do some pretty cool stuff. And so that was what got me excited to take this next step with my RC hobby is to like actually get this in a position and do some footage of cool stuff and, and take pictures from a position that I wouldn't be able to get anywhere else than with, with a flying quadcopter, you know? And you know, there's plenty of them on the market out there, um, but they're pretty darn expensive and you don't have access to the code either. So this is pretty fun. Having access to that code and being able to tweak it is really what this is all about. So um, here is where we set up the flight modes. And so this screen took me a while to get used to. Basically, you can, you can listen to one channel from your transmitter and it can send a PWM signal that's from zero to full. And then you can set up windows for what modes you want. But that requires a little more programming at the transmitter end. If you have the channels, then you can use multi-channel mode selection. And so now, my switches that are assigned to those channels actually just engage that mode. So right now I'm in manual. You can see the orange here on the top left. And then if I click my C switch, it moves to the middle on channel seven and it actually moved to hold. So this is what I got to demonstrate uh, for our demo a little later. And then if I click one more time on that, it bumps that channel down to a different PWM signal and it goes to a land mode right here. So that's how I'm able to bounce between different modes. Um, up here you've got switch settings and I want it, my arm switch to be on channel five. So I can try to arm it right now, but this software is pretty smart actually. And it says, hey, you're not allowed to do that when you're plugged in with USB which is a pretty good idea uh, because I wouldn't want this spinning right now and chopping up my USB cable or my fingers. Um, so anyways, uh, that's on channel five. And then there's a kill switch option too, which I like the idea of that. If things got out of control or I couldn't see it anymore, or, you know, hopefully none of that would happen, but you can set up a channel to just kill all motors and it'll go down, down into the ground wherever it is, but at least it's not long gone flying to somewhere you may not know where it ends up. Um, so those two safety features are pretty awesome. Power, pretty straightforward. It's just watching the voltage on your LiPo battery. It has a voltage divider built into it, so it can make decisions and actually decide to come home if the battery gets too low. Um, it can also just give you warnings um, saying, hey, your battery's low, you should land now. 
Um, this electronic speed control calibration was pretty straightforward. I just hit that calibrate button and then it actually sends the commands to my speed controls um, to calibrate the maximum and minimum so they work. That was pretty easy. Uh, the safety stuff I wanted to highlight too. Um, one that I thought was really cool is a geofence fail safe trigger. So essentially this sets up, uh, when you first power up the thing and you're ready to go for your first flight, it records its position at that moment and it thinks that's home. So that's good, got a home position. And then while you're flying, it's also monitoring how far away you are. So it can set, you can set up a radius and then also your altitude. So I set it up for 100 meters radius from where I was and a max altitude of 100 meters too. So if it were to get beyond that geofence, then it would go into return mode and actually take control from whatever I was doing or whatever mode it was in before and actually try to fly the thing back home. There's a couple, a couple other options you can have here. All of these safety features you can change. So you can either just have it say, give you a warning or it can go into hold mode where it holds position, it can go into return mode, or it can terminate. So those are your options there. I actually had it programmed to return mode just in case. Um, and I did not get into the camera stuff, but I didn't enter that world. I only, I only set up an FPV camera in order to align uh, a shot we wanted to get. But you can also control a, a gimbal as well and set up other channels to adjust um, your angle, uh, rotation angle and vertical angle for your gimbal, which is pretty cool. And that was pretty much everything that I got into with this to get it up and running. The telemetry stuff was pretty straightforward. Telemetry has a four pin JST that goes straight into the PixHawk. It's called Telem1 right there. So I plugged that in. The other one, the receiver, um, goes into your computer over USB. And if you have the Q ground control running, it just recognizes it and starts taking data straight from your quad. Um, so I was able to get position and heading and all that cool stuff um, overlaid on a map. And um, so it's a pretty good run through of, uh, of the setup software there. Like I said, it's all pretty straightforward. And you can also hit up PixHawks' website. We will have links um, on the product page to get you there. Um, there's quite a lot of information there, but if you stay focused on the PixHawk 4 Mini, then it'll navigate you through a nice setup there as well and give you even more detail on all the different modes and stuff. But uh, yeah, so that was my run through. Let's actually look at some of the footage we got with this on our little demo. We took it out to a field nearby here, Spark Fun, and um, had a little fun. And the goal of the first flight was to take it up manually and then put it in a position and then try the hold mode and see how that does. And so at this shot right here, um, you can see that it's holding position even with some wind coming at it. It's pretty exciting that this quadcopter is holding position totally autonomously. Uh, it's sort of like the blink moment <laughs> with uh, when you're playing with an Arduino that first time and you get an LED to blink, you're like, I actually made it do that. Um, so this is definitely that blink moment with a quadcopter playing with the PixHawk 4 Mini um, that it actually just did one little thing that I controlled. So then I brought it in for a manual landing. So this is the second flight we did. And I took it out a little further into the field to give it a little more room because I was planning on an autonomous landing. And so then we decided to do some cartwheels out in the middle of the yard there without the controller in hand. That's kind of a scary moment for me there actually, or an exciting one. Um, being so far away from the controller on any of my RC toys is a scary thought to me. <laughs> so here is a uh, the last, oh no, and then you start seeing some spinning. Wow, that happened in like two seconds? It felt like a lifetime while we were out there when I was watching it fall. <laughs> so um, that's the footage we got. Um, and my lesson learned there was that we were, I was flying manually, right? No problem, got it up in the position, clicked my hold. It's holding position, that's awesome. And then we went off and had some fun. I came back. And just the habit in me as a pilot is always throttle down. Like, I don't fly quadcopters that much, or I, I certainly never jump from an autonomous mode into a manual mode. I've never done that before. Um, and so with like gliders and airplanes and 
helicopters, I'm always thinking like when I'm not touching the controller, throttle down, right? Because I'm gonna probably go touch the thing and I don't want it spinning. So anyways, I had the throttle down and I quickly come out of autonomous mode, so it's, it's holding position, and I'm in manual mode and the throttle's all the way down. So immediately it flips over and starts spinning on its way down and it happens so quickly that I just didn't even think to either try to get back into hold mode or throw the throttle up it was just sort of like, I remember thinking in my mind like, uh oh, did I hit the kill switch? Like, did I hit the wrong switch? And it just killed the motors. But luckily the damage wasn't that bad. Um, I actually cracked one of the arms uh, right here. It's a little loose now. So we weren't able to do a third flight. And then the GPS module had cracked right here. But you get such a long little rod here that actually, you, if it cracks, you can just sort of cut out that piece, shove it back down in, and uh, you got your uh, GPS pole back up. So I reckon I have four or five more crashes on this before this pole will need to be replaced. Um, and the frames on quadcopters are usually not that bad, so I think I could probably get a replacement arm here in the like 20, 30 bucks. Maybe even uh, cut one on the laser printer, we'll see. But yeah, so a lesson learned there was that uh, if I'm ever in an autonomous mode, I want to keep my throttle up when I jump back into manual mode. Or maybe less manual flying. You know, I got to start trusting the flight controller and having a little more trust in there. And I was hoping we would get to try the autonomous landing. So hopefully next time when I get this up and running again, we'll do another video doing a nice autonomous landing coming down. Um, certainly much better than my throttle killed tumble. <laughs> Luckily it was grass, you know, not too much broke. None of the electronics broke, so I was really excited about that. So that's our little adventure with the Pixhawk uh, 4 Mini, and um, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, you can see the, the product page on sparkfun.com, and then there's a bunch of stuff on Pixhawk's website too, which we will have links to. So hit up sparkfun.com and check it out.